To a ruler, an everlasting enemy is convenient. By directing the public's animosity outside his borders, he can unify their frame of mind. Guns for hire continue the war. Then enrich the economy with their spoils. War as a business will become a permanent tool for manipulating the public mind. A new business model. You might even call it a war economy. Cause is busy in Metal Gear Solid. He has to grow Big Boss's PMC, MSF, to something respectable, though the methods in which he goes about doing this are less than heroic. Do his methods make him a villain, though? And is he responsible for all the damage his war economy brings to the world decades after its creation? Welcome back! If you're new here, my name is Luffy and welcome to my channel! I talk video games and character analysis, so if that's your thing, subscribe and stick around! Heads up! This video will have spoilers for Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes, and Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Commodifying Soldiers, The War Economy In the new age, armies won't be tied to states, and war will become a business. We'll be a valuable commodity. There'll be clients all over the world who need our services. MSF is only the beginning. What we're creating here is a revolution in itself. What happens to career soldiers when they have no skills outside of the battlefield, no desire to change careers, but have been disillusioned by the lies their governments fed them to keep them fighting for their causes? How do they feed themselves and their families? Big Boss would answer this question by opening the doors to his PMC, MSF. He made a home for soldiers without a nation, but who weren't ready to give up the fight just yet. Cause saw BB's PMC as a business opportunity. PMCs not tied to a government or an ideology could fight endlessly without a nation's ideologies, alliances, or limited resources to hinder them, inviting in an endless income stream. In 1974, Cause envisioned the war economy, a lucrative business model that helps perpetuate never-ending war by connecting PMCs that operate without an official tie to any government with governments that need them to fight in their proxy wars. Proxy wars gained in popularity during the Cold War when countries didn't want to get sucked into direct conflicts with one another, as a direct conflict could mean the start of World War III or a nuclear war. Proxy wars allowed countries to exert their influence over the world and diminish the influence of rival countries without risking nuclear war. Cause predicted the war economy would be the new driving force in the world economy. In the new age, armies won't be tied to states, and war will become a business. We'll be a valuable commodity. Without an ideology to limit soldiers, they could take any contract that suited them and profit with a never-ending demand for work so long as there's a war to be fought in. And war isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Soldiers were already commodified by their governments, but they were further dehumanized and used as tools in a world that needed a steady supply of soldiers to fight their proxy wars. What repercussions did the war economy have on the world? The war industry we started has taken a pretty crooked course these past nine years. With no other options, soldiers have become dogs of war, sent to complex zones as private detected. forces, or PFs. Guys we fought alongside are dying all around the globe for no reason. No banner. But it's how they survive. MSF fell in 1974, but the war economy didn't lose momentum. Private forces adopted MSF's business model, affording them the same never-ending revenue stream as they fought proxy wars. Big Boss set out to make a place where soldiers weren't viewed as tools, but Cause's war economy commodified soldiers to the nth degree. With no ideology to fight for, soldiers were used to fight proxy wars that helped governments they had no ties to increase their influence over the world. BB's dream couldn't be further from reality under Cause's war economy. The war economy turned into a source of income for those controlling the PFs. Their ability to use war to turn a profit kept soldiers fighting everlasting wars in PFs that fought only because they were paid to keep on fighting. Behind the scenes, Zero was creating the Patriots AIs, a set of AIs that would help control the systems he was crafting in order to bring the world together under his banner. By 2014, Zero's AIs took advantage of the war economy and created the SOP system. The SOP system controlled who could use what weapons through soldiers' nanomachines, along with controlling the soldiers themselves. A soldier's nanomachines dampened negative emotions and controlled things like adrenaline to make soldiers as effective as possible in battle. By controlling so many key pieces of war, the Patriots AIs could harness the war economy and use it to keep their systems and influence funded. Side note, Eva attributes Zero to have been the one to make the war economy as Zero made the Patriots AIs. Those AIs are responsible for the creation of the war economy, and 
they gave rise to the Sons of the Patriot system. And God, do I wish it was that easy. I'd love to blame Zero for everything the war economy does, but as we've already been over, Cause was long thinking about the war economy before MGS4. Zero's SOP system increased the demand for war as it became more in control of warfare. SOP controls the soldiers in the wars. The SOP system also opened the door to illegal activity for people like Drebin893, who took advantage of loopholes in the system to gun launder. The Patriot AIs took Zero's goal of uniting the world under one banner and deviated from it as their programming evolved over time to instead create this new world there were no ideologies, no principles, no ideals, not even the thing she treasured most, loyalty. Forty years after its inception, the war economy was the tool the Patriot AIs used to bring the world to the brink of destruction. It was the tool they used to fund their systems and expand their control over the world. And though the Patriot AIs were destroyed in 2014, the war economy continued to affect the world in a negative way. The war economy is heating up the R&D race. It's not just the PMCs, either. Every corporation tethered to the military-industrial complex is losing its sense of morality. And it's us science holics who are doing their dirty work for them, not even realizing it. Never-ending proxy wars need a never-ending supply of soldiers, but soldiers themselves are a finite resource. What happens when a soldier has a limb blown off in battle? They have to be retired from the battlefield. It's not as though you can just pop an arm back on unless you're Ocelot or BB. Thus, cybernetics were dived into as a way to get soldiers back onto the field and also as a way to enhance their soldiers. Frank Yeager's entire body was reconstructed through surgery, and he was reborn as the cyborg ninja. Legendary soldier Gray Fox was successfully put back together after he was blown apart by a landmine. He was enhanced by a cybernetic module that was inserted into his body at the skeletal level and had a powered exoskeleton grafted directly onto his body. Raiden fell victim to cybernetic experiments himself. He had his head just above the lower jaw and his spine excised and grafted onto an enhanced synthetic body against his will. People were often pressured to join PMCs in order to get replacement limbs, as if they fought for the PMC, their surgeries would be covered by the PMC. By 2018, child soldiers were sucked into the war machine too. Their brains were scooped out, trained to fight via VR, and then implanted into cyborg bodies as a cyborg body is more deadly than a child body. The war economy made waging wars easier as it was easier to find people to fight in these proxy wars. As demand rose for soldiers, the solution grew more twisted as scientists researched how they can increase the usability of soldiers. They turned to cybernetics and ripped people's brains from their bodies to implant them in cybernetic bodies. Cyborgs could pop lost limbs back on. A cyborg's longevity in the field way surpassed their human counterparts. The war economy was not only catastrophic for the regions its proxy wars were waged in, but also stripped people of their literal humanity as soldiers and child soldiers alike were stuffed into cyborg bodies to fight in wars. If Cause is one of the founders of the war economy, should he take responsibility for the atrocities it committed? More importantly, if we take Cause out of the equation, would the war economy have been invented anyways without him? Was Cause just taking advantage of a budding system? Or is he responsible for the war economy and all the damage it causes throughout Metal Gear Solid? Let me know in the comments what you think it is. Causes traitorous actions. Aside from the war economy, there are a few decisions Cause makes that make him less than a hero. The first being his betraying BB by knowingly bringing a KGB spy and a cypher spy into MSF. Though he used both these spies to grow MSF and obtain a permanent base of operation for BB, he still knowingly, and without telling BB, let spies into their organization. The boss taught BB. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. Cause used his business skills in a way that hurt BB, even if it did grow his organization. And for that, BB couldn't forgive him. If you'd like to hear more about this, I have a video on Cause's betrayal linked in the description below. The second thing we need to adjust is a voice line in MGS5 Ground Zero's Chico's Tape 7. There's a singular voice line that says, Give the shot already! Cause's voice actor reads this line both in the English version and the Japanese version of MGS5, so it's definitely meant to be Cause saying it. He says this in regards to Cause, who's being sedated so she can be implanted with two bombs by Skullface. Why was Cause working with Skullface, and what does that mean when MSF is attacked and destroyed by Skullface not long after? I shudder to think about it. Cause sticks his hands in so many cookie jars, and most of the cookies he pulls out are just for him. Is this selfishness enough to label him as Metal Gear Solid's worst villain, though? YouTube poll. 
We took a poll here on YouTube asking if Cause was Metal Gear Solid's worst villain, and the majority of you voted it was a gray area. Which breaks my heart. It is a gray area, but still. The Mad Cow commented, Cause found a way to profit off a world state that already existed. There are a hundred armed conflicts at any given time in the world. These wars will burn with or without Cause. Cause is just a war profiter, like America. Which is the direction I'm leaning into. I think the war economy would have grown with or without Cause, and he was just taking advantage of things. That one outlander commented, Cause betrayed Big Boss, then like a petulant child swore revenge on both him and Zero when Big Boss was like, yeah, can't be your homie anymore. He's worst. Which, like, fair. My best bro sent me a screen cap of a screenshot that kicked off the subject for this whole video. The commenter, Caesar Saladin, said, Cause spends all of the phantom pain sulking about how he was betrayed and nearly annihilated without seeming to realize he was in the betrayal and annihilation industry. If you can't take it, don't dish it out. Which is similar to what that one outlander commented. Cause really was in the betrayal and annihilation industry, but was upset when people called him out for betraying and annihilating, and then furious when he's betrayed and annihilated. Daniel Beckman6742 pointed out, The most glaring offense is the chemical burgers. That is an abomination for which the only fitting punishment is walking barefoot on a mile of left out Legos. Which really made me laugh. Cause really do be out here inventing the war economy and also McDonald's. Y'all had a lot of really great things to say on this subject, and I wish I could include everyone's comments here. Especially the ones that said Cause isn't a villain and that he's so likable, it's hard to think about how awful he really is. Cause does a lot in Metal Gear Solid. He invents the war economy that commodifies soldiers to the point that they lose bodily autonomy, either through the control of nanomachines or by losing their bodies completely and getting inserted into cyborg bodies instead. The war economy raises the demand for child soldiers as well. Other than the war economy, he also betrays those closest to him and is involved in one of the darkest moments in MGS history, where Paws is inserted with two bombs. Is this enough to call Kaz Metal Gear Solid's biggest villain? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you so, so much for making it to the end of today's video. If you liked it, share it with someone who wants to know more about Metal Gear Solid lore. If you need more MGS content, check out my Patreon. I upload articles I write on upcoming videos or just thought pieces on MGS in general. Or join us in Discord, we're always talking about MGS. More importantly than that though, please take care of yourself and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.